All right, y'all, let's go to the word of God. The everlasting, eternal, infallible, incorruptible, theanoustos. God breathed, convicting, convincing, directing, guiding word of God. And I'll be in Luke chapter 1 today. That's where our focus will be. So if you have a copy of the scriptures, you can join me there in Luke chapter 1. If you have it on a device, Luke chapter 1 is where we'll be today. And our focus will be on verses 5 through 25. Now, if you are at one of our physical locations, in-person locations, we welcome you here. I would like for you to join me in standing as I read this word to you. As we stand in reverence for the word of God. Why stand, Pastor? Because God's about to speak to us. And when God speaks to us, we should stand at attention. Yeah. And say like, like Samuel, speak, Lord. Thy servant is listening. <laughs> yeah, that's, that should be our attitude when we come to church. God if, you were, God, if you were generous enough to speak to us, we should be grateful enough to stand attention. Now, you don't have to stand for the whole message. Just I want you to stand for what I'm going to read that we're going to teach today, beginning in Luke chapter 1, verse 5. Are you all with me? Zion anywhere, are you with me? Say, I'm with you in the chat. Yeah, Zion Lando, are y'all with me? Amen. Amen. Beginning in verse 5, beginning in verse 5, it says, When Herod was king of Judah, there was a priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah, and his wife Elizabeth was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Verse 6, Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes careful to obey all the commandments and regulations. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, verse 7. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive, and they were both very old. Let me read that again. They had no children. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive, and they were both very old. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive. Verse 6 says they were righteous in God's eyes. They obeyed all the Lord's commandments and regulations, but they had no children. Elizabeth was unable to conceive. You know, hard things happen to holy people. <laughs> Don't think because you're righteous, you're not going to have pain. One day, verse 8 says, Zechariah was serving God in the temple for his order was on duty that week. And as was the custom of the priest, he was chosen by lot to enter into the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. Verse 10, while the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. And while Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing right in at, uh, to the right of the incense altar. And Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. <laughs> yeah, God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you ought to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. Uh huh. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth, and he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. He will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Yeah, that's what's up. Verse 18, Zechariah said to the angel, how? Hmm. That, that, that surprised me. He should be happy. How can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now. And my wife is also well along in years. Yeah. Somebody say, this is bad English, but say it anyway. We old. <laughs> you got to be a little older to say that about you and your person, your relationship. We old. Mm -hmm. 
Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. God sent me to give you this good news. But now since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. You ain't going to be able to put your mouth on this miracle. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Mm. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out of the sanctuary, wondering, why is he taking so long? And when he did come out, he couldn't speak to them. Then they realized from his gestures and his silence that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary. Verse 23, when Zechariah's week of service in the temple was over, he returned home. And soon afterwards, sure enough, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. She says in verse 25, how kind the Lord is. He has taken away my disgrace of having no children. I want to go back to verse 13 where I want to focus today where it says in verse 13, the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Before you're seated, I want you to go around to as many people as you can, and I want you to type this in the chat as well, and I want you to encourage them and give them a pound and say, God has heard your prayer. God has heard your prayer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's listening. He was listening. God has heard your prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put that in the chat. God has heard your prayer. <laughs> Even if you didn't say it out loud, he heard it. Even if you whispered it, he heard it. Y'all must be in the, in the production room pounding each other. I'm right here. Just follow me. God has heard your prayer. God has heard your prayer. God knows what you've been praying about. Even if you whispered it when you got up in the morning, you were getting yourself together, God heard it. Even if you never said it out loud, God heard it. Even if it's tucked away in a journal somewhere and you wrote it down on a piece of paper, God heard your prayer. And just like Gabriel said, he's been standing in the presence of God and he came to bring you good news. I've been standing in the presence of God and he came to, he gave me some news for you today and he wants me to know not only has God heard your prayer, but he's going to answer it just like he answered Zechariah's and Elizabeth's prayer. He's going to answer it in the affirmative. Somebody give God a praise that he heard me. <laughs> Don't be afraid he heard you. Don't trip he heard you. Don't worry he heard you. God has heard your prayer. You may be seated. We are as human beings more complex than it seems on the surface. Many of us are like the old saying, don't judge a book by its cover. And the reason why you shouldn't judge a book by its cover because the cover is not a true reflection of the content of a book or an individual. And the reality is all of us are covered. Not just with sinew and flesh and skin, we're covered with undergarments and external clothing. But even beyond that, we're also covered with titles and our occupation and our profession. And we have things that people identify us by, like the names they call us and the jobs that we do. And all of those things are covering. So if somebody says, I'm a husband, that's, that's a cover. I'm a wife. I'm a, I'm a dad. I'm a father. I'm a, a aunt. I'm an uncle. I'm a coach. I'm an engineer. Those are titles, but they're also covers. Even in the church, somebody says, well, I'm a psalmist. I'm a, I'm a vocal leader. I'm a musician. I'm a pastor. I'm a preacher. The, the, I'm anointed. I'm a prophet. I'm a priest. I'm, a, I'm an evangelist. I, I'm an apostle. Whatever. Well, they're all titles, and they might, they might genuinely represent what we do, but at the end of the day, they're covers. And many of us are very thorough at hiding under those covers. We, we, and, and, the more, and the more introverted you are, the less disclosure you'll give, the more covered you are. But even us, those of us who are extroverted, and by extroverted, that simply means we talk before we think. <laughs> and we talk while we're thinking. <laughs> I'm working this out while I'm saying this to you. 
So you go and we ain't, we'll clean it up later. Introverts would never bust out their mouth like that. <laughs> they don't even want to say, well, let me think. They don't even ask you for permission to think. They will just get quiet on you. Extroverts just running their mouth. We run them. We processing and talking at the same time. You hear that process? But even an extrovert has never disclosed everything that they are. How many of you know that most people really don't really, really know, know you? <laughs> you don't really know, know me. You know what I've allowed you to know. You know what I've shared with you. <laughs> but if you really want to ever really know somebody, you have to be able to see what they're praying. <laughs> yeah, you have to know their private prayers. I'm not talking about the prayers they pray out loud and we pray for our children, we pray for our country. I'm talking about those secret longings. <laughs> I'm talking about that stuff we don't share with anybody. It is, it is, it is, it is a revel. Pr those prayers don't lie. They're a revelation as to who we are. They reveal who we are. And most of us are not cool with everybody knowing we, who we are. That's why this moment when the angel Gabriel came to Zechariah and told him what he had been praying, that's a little invasive. Imagine somebody comes up to you and say, the, the Lord sent me and told me he heard your prayer. And then they actually start reciting what you pray. That's a little, you, you're doing too much right now. You blown my cover. I'm a priest. I'm of the order of Abijah. I'm of the descendants of Aaron. My wife and I are leaders in the church community. We carry ourselves with dignity and we keep our pain, we keep our pain in private. We have carried our sorrows publicly while not hanging our heads low. We have never publicly complained about what we struggle with and what is hurting us. And so for you to come and tell me what you're not even supposed to know is a bit disturbing. <laughs> but I came to tell somebody today that the reason why God is going to answer your prayers, when God answers your prayers, that's not only going to bless you, it's also going to reveal your longings. Because whatever you've been praying about is something you long for. But God told me to tell you, when he, when he blesses you by answering your prayers, he's not trying to expose you, he's trying to encourage you. Because not only is he going to, not only has he heard your prayer, but many of you, just like Zechariah and Elizabeth, he's going to answer in the affirmative. Let's walk through this passage and see what morsels we can take from it to feed our spirits. Verse 5 says, introduces not only Zechariah, but the time in which he served as a priest. He's doing this during the time of King uh, Herod, the king of Judah, and it tells us the priestly order that he was a part of. Now, now there were there were around 20,000 priests during this time, and they were broken up into 24 groups or what they would call orders. His order was called the order of Abijah. And in each order, they had somewhere around 800 priests in each order. So he is a part of this group and out of all of the 20,000 priests and the 24 orders and the 800 priests in his group, he and his wife were chosen to parent the forerunner to Jesus Christ, John the Baptist. You know, sometimes it's not just who you are, it's where you are. They were in position. They were, they were faithful in position to be elevated like that. To have this opportunity and this assignment came from where they were positioned. One of the reasons why people are leaving their living is because they want to be in position. They want to be where God is at work. That's that, at the end of the day, it's not always economics. It's not always finances. See, some people really want to be where God is at work. Anybody want to be where God is at work? Like, I, I just want to, I want to be in that space where God is moving. Because, because the reason why they were rewarded is because they were faithful. Somebody say faithful. It is, see, you don't, you, you don't get elevated because you're lucky. You get elevated because you're faithful. You can't just hit one three-point shot and you want an NBA contract. <laughs> the people that get contracts have been hitting a lot of uh, hitting a lot of shots, and some of you getting elevated in 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 different venues and different spaces because you've been faithful. You've been hitting threes when nobody's been looking. <laughs> you've been like David. You've been slaying bears and lions in the wilderness with no witnesses, but God was watching. <laughs> uh, elevation always follows faithfulness. 
If you want to be elevated, be faithful. And God will do his what God will do. He'll bless you with something you prayed for. Sometimes some of you pray for something and you didn't even let anybody know it was between you and God. God, I sure wish I could get this opportunity. I sure wish you would open that door. Sometimes you don't even say it out loud. You just imagine yourself in that role. You imagine yourself doing that thing. And because you were faithful, one day God stepped in and elevated you. Just came out of nowhere and elevated you and say, you're the one. It's time now. Somebody give God a praise for that. I don't even know who I'm talking to right now, but some of you already have experienced that, but I'm telling you, he's about to do it again. Some of you are in line to get elevated, but you got to be in place. They were faithful. And verse six tells us about the kind of character they were. These were good people, good in the eyes of God. It's one thing to be good in the eyes of people. They were good in God's eyes. These were good church folk. They, they probably were raised in church, probably went to Sunday school and vacation Bible school and Baptist training union on Sunday nights and was in youth group during the week. And then they got older. They was in the college and career ministry. And then, then when they got married, they got right, right, they got right into the married couples ministry. That's how they rolled. They were, they were now, now Zachariah and Elizabeth were not sinless because only God is sinless, but they were blameless. <laughs> You'll get that when you get on the way home. You can, you, 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 you don't have to be sin, sinless to be blameless. They lived upright. They didn't have any scandalous stuff going on in their life. They live inoffensive lives. And in spite of the fact that they lived that way, they still had pain. She couldn't have children. In fact, the pain was so great that the Bible says, she says in verse 25, she says, God has finally taken this disgrace from me. They lived for years with that kind of pain. In fact, in fact, she says in one translation, you know what? People think something's wrong with me. See, it's one, let me tell you something. It's one thing to not be able to have children. But this thing, when you get to verse 7, this thing is on a whole nother level. Because not only have they not had children, but they're old. See, it's one thing to be young and not being able to have a child. But when you pass the childbearing years, that ship has sailed. Like that's, a, that's, a, that's something that will never happen. What I'm trying to tell y'all, they had already made peace with this not happening. They had already determined that this wasn't going to happen in their life. If we're too old for this. It's too late for this. I don't even expect this. But I came to preach to somebody today. God is about to do something in your life that doesn't even make sense time-wise. He's about to do something that's outside of the window of opportunity. You thought that it couldn't happen at this time because you felt it had to happen at that time. But I came to tell you that God is always on time. God is never late even if he doesn't come as fast as we want him to. That's good right there. I said God is never late even if he doesn't come as fast as we want him to. And the reason why it seems like he's late is because God is operating in a different type of time. Let me see if I can get this thing to work. I don't know. If, let me see if I can make this. I probably can't. Let me see. I'm going to try to make this work so I can be cool. There it is. There are two Greek words in the Bible for time. One word for time is called chronos. It's where we get the word chronology from. And the second word is the word kairos. Is that going to come up on the thing or are we, are we making connection? I'm, I'm writing here trying to be cute and... In my, my situation not happening. But but chronos, by definition, is it means chronology. It is linear time. It is just it is kept on a watch and it is kept on a calendar. It is it is when seconds turn to minutes and minutes turn to, to hours and hours turn to days and days turn to weeks and weeks turn to months and months turn to years and years turn to decades and decades turn to centuries, etc. That's chronology. That's chronos. That's how that works. That's what that is. Then there is a time called Kairos. And Kairos happens within Kronos, but Kairos is a moment in time. It is a special time. It is a sacred time. It is a time where God does something. So, so we keep Kronos on a watch. We keep Kronos on a calendar, but only God keeps Kairos. God makes things happen. How about that? I got it. I don't know what you did, but thank you for, he came out. He came out like the Lord from behind the veil. <laughs> Yeah. So, 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 so watch this at the end. I'm jumping ahead at the end in verse 20. If you go down to verse 20, it says that what happened happened at the proper time. 
That's good right there. Well, it happened at the proper time. This will be fulfilled at the proper time. That's, that's, those two words, proper time, in Greek is one word, kairos. It's happening at the proper time. It seems like it's late. The reason why it seems like God is late is because we pray for stuff in Kronos, but he delivers it in Kairos. <laughs> and the reason why it takes so long is because God will give you a desire for something long before he delivers the something to you. <laughs> you you've seen it in your own life. There, there are women who wanted to be married when you were a little girl. When you were playing with Barbies, you saw the day when you would be a wife. But it may have been three decades later before it happens. Because God will give you a desire for something before he delivers the something to you. Because he's working on the something that he's going to give to you. And he's working on you to be able to handle y'all. You can't get it when you first want it. Y'all ain't ready for me today. That's called crime. So, 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 so some of you wanted to run your own company and have your own business for a long time. You've been wanting to lead for a long time, but that's chronos. You got to wait for Kairos for the door to open because he'll give you a desire for something long before he delivers what he gives you the desire. But he's never late. He's just operating on a different time. And Kairos is so special that it only comes around every now and then. But I'm convinced that God gave me this word this weekend for our church. And here's what I want you to understand. I got a word for you. Kairos is coming. <laughs> Kairos is coming. Yes, sir. It's coming. Yeah, I want you to do me a favor. Wherever you are right now, I want you to go around to three people and tell them, just punch them and say, Kairos is coming. Kairos is coming. I didn't know that word before today, but it's coming. Kairos is coming. Kairos is coming. My desire and my de destiny is about to embrace. Kairos is coming. What I wanted and what's coming is about to come together. Kairos is coming. Somebody give God a praise by faith that Kairos is coming. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. My moment is coming. My promotion is coming. My elevation is coming. My moment is coming. My day is coming. He's about to answer a prayer that I forgot I prayed. When I thought it was over, I thought it wasn't gonna happen. Kairos, Kairos, Kairos is coming. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming, and God, I thank you that it's coming. I don't even know who it's coming for, but I'm grateful for somebody even if it ain't me. Is anybody like that? You just grateful, God, even if it ain't me, I thank you that you, I thank you for what you're gonna do for her. I thank you for what you're gonna do for him. I thank you for what you're gonna do for them. I'm grateful for somebody else. I don't know who it is, I don't know what it is, but something is coming. Something is coming. Something is coming. I, I'm telling you, I ain't playing with something is coming and it's going to blow your mind. It's going to be exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ask or think because Zachariah and Elizabeth, all they wanted was a son. They got the forerunner. They got a man that would turn a whole nation around. They got more than they asked for because when God blesses you, it's going to be worth the wait. Somebody give them a I said, somebody give it to give them a praise for what's coming. It's going to be worth it. 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 It's going to blow your mind. It's going to be big. It's going to be great. He didn't have you wait this long for something average. Your wait wasn't average. Our God is not average. And what's coming is not average. Give him I said, give him. Y'all may as well wake up this morning. Give God a praise. Let me get back to this passage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, verse 7 sets the context, y'all. They didn't have kids. And when Gabriel says... God heard your prayer, it reveals what they've been wanting. But when verse 7 says they're both very old, it revealed what they needed. <laughs> Y'all missed that. They, they had wanted a child, but because they're old, they now need a miracle. <laughs> God waited so long to give them what, he, what they wanted that when he gave it to them, they wouldn't be able to say, we pulled this off. They would have to say, if it had not been 
<laughs> Excuse me, y'all. I feel like if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we would have been swallowed up. But thanks be to God. We need a miracle. We need a miracle. We need a miracle. And, and Zechariah couldn't get this together. He See, Zechariah's like, how? I'm all over this text now. How? How? How are we going to do this? Because he thought that God needed him and his wife to have their youthful virility to pull it off. But the, the very nature of a miracle is, it is when the weakness and incompetence of man meets the power and the competence of God. God don't need you to be capable. He just needs you to be available. God. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back of YouTube. God doesn't need you to be capable. He just needs you to be available. Get out of God's way. I said, get out of God's way. Let him move. You don't have to have the money. You don't have to have the resources. You don't have to have the ability. You don't have to have the know-how. You don't have to know how. Is there anybody in here that doesn't even care how he does it? I don't need to ask you how. It ain't none of my business how. Whatever you do, however you do it, whenever you do it, it's all right with me. I said, it's all right with me. Any way you bless me. Y'all sit down for a minute. Y'all ain't acting like your normal eight o'clock selves. Y'all done came with some energy. I wonder how we doing over Landover right now. Yeah. Listen to verse eight. It says in verse eight, one day, Zechariah was serving God in the temple. I got stuck right there, drummer Wilson. I got stuck right there because it says one day Zechariah was serving God in the temple. Now, you, that ain't going to mean nothing to you because that's what he did. But it'll mean something to you if you throw that up against what we just learned about him in verse 7. <laughs> you got that, didn't you? So, so, so him and his wife have pain in their life. They have enormous pain. They live with shame. But the Bible says, Zechariah, while he's old, is still serving God in the temple. Okay, let me say it again for the people who rode the small bus to school. Uh, you got the small Christian bus. I was on that bus too. Had the helmet and the chin strap and everything. I've grown. I'm saying, so I'm going to say it one more time. The man's got a deficit in his life. They've got a hole in their heart. They've lived with this pain for years. But they're the man is still in his old age serving in the temple. Now, the reason why I said that today is, is because I know some people in all of our locations. There's some people in this room right now that I know personally who are serving God anyway, in spite of their pain, in spite of what God didn't do, in spite of the, 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 the deficit that they feel, the, the loss that they feel, in the, they still are serving God. There are people that land over right now, and I know personally are still serving God in spite of, and they're serving God, and people, um, the other people have gone through similar stuff and walked away from God and walked away from the temple and walked away from the church. And what I'm here to say is, is that there's somebody's got a kind of made up mind to say, God, it doesn't matter what happens of me, I promise you I'm going to serve you till I die. Is there anybody here that got a made up mind? I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. I'm too far in now. I ain't going nowhere. I believe this thing. I'm down with the king. You break me? I ain't going nowhere. Though you slay me, <laughs> yet will I trust you. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back, the world behind me, the cross before me, excuse me y'all, no turning back, no turning back, though no one join me, still I will follow. Faithful, faithful, because my service to you is not contingent upon you doing everything I want you to do. 
if you do it, I'll serve you. If you don't do it, I'll serve you. If you give it to me, I'll serve you. If you keep it from me, I'll serve you. I love you. My love for you is not conditional. Your love for me was not conditional. You started this thing. Who understands what I'm talking about in here? I'm trying to get through this. So he's serving in the temple one day. And the Bible says, excuse me, I'm going to try to hurry up. The Bible, I know I'm boring you. The Bible says that, that it just so happens that his order was on duty. Watch this, Dave. Watch this. So, so, so now there are 20,000 priests. There are 24 orders. And it just so happened <laughs> that the order of Abijah was scheduled to week, work, work that week. The same week that God knows he's sending Gabriel to announce the forerunner to his chosen parents. So it just so happened that out of 20,000 <laughs> and 24 groups, the one group that Zechariah was in was chosen. And then you want to take it deeper. When his group got chosen, only one of the 800 get to go in and light the incense. The Bible says they chose him by lot. That, that's like spinning the bottle. 800 of us stand around the bottle and they spin the bottle and the joint stop on you. What I'm trying to tell you is, is you ain't going to see it until it happens. But when you rewind the tape, you're going to be able to see all the alignment and one divine coincidence after another, after another, after another. Because when God wants to bless you, can't nobody stop it. You're going to be where you're supposed to be. They're going to open the door when they're supposed to open it. You're going to be in the right group at the right. Who understands what I'm talking about in here? You got when God is about to bless you, you are unstoppable. Somebody say, set me up, Lord. Set me up. Set me up. I'm ready. I'm grateful. Set me up. Line it up, Jesus. Line it up. Line it up like a nice shape up. Put me in the pocket. Put me right where I need to be. Thank you, Lord. I'm in the right group. I got the right choice. I got the right selection. Most people, out of the 20,000 priests, you only got to light the incense one time in your life if you were fortunate. Here's his moment. So he's in there lighting the camp, the incense, right? And verse 10 says, there's a crowd outside that's just praying. Mm. <laughs> a large crowd outside praying. And I said, okay, that means it must be the Sabbath and the people have come to worship or it's the other 20,000 priests that are out there. But whether it's priests or parishioners, what I love about it is they're praying. And I start thinking, what if Zion Church, everybody connected to Zion Church, instead of rolling up in here and being conservative and waiting on somebody to move you and waiting on the song to touch you and waiting to see if who you want to preach is preaching. What if you came here instead and started praying? Say, God, we need to move from you. <laughs> Would you move in our midst? What if during the service you were still praying, God, move, speak? What if you contributed to the move of God by your prayers? So now, anyway, anyway, they, they, he's in there. And he's lighting the incense, and then something happens. Out of nowhere, unannounced, this being is standing there looking at him. Now listen, y'all, the man already old. That could have killed him right there. Let me paint the picture. Let's say you're at work somewhere, you're working somewhere, and you by yourself. There ain't nobody else in the office. Ain't nobody else in the mail room. Ain't nobody else in the, in the cubicle. Ain't nobody else in the whole vicinity. Just you in there. You stocking shelves, whatever you're doing. And you look up and somebody's standing there looking at you. <laughs> Don't play with me, y'all. Y'all know. You know right then. Some of us already got bad nerves. I'm paranoid. My wife be walking past me in the house. Ah, why did he say he was coming? Where? The man almost lost it because his, nobody from outside said, hey, yo, hey, Zach, somebody here to see you, man. None of that. No announcement. No nothing. Didn't knock on the door. Just standing there staring at him. And then he says, don't be afraid. Ooh. <laughs> what I like about it is, see, what I like about God is he is interrupting the service. Because at the end of the day, Zechariah is really just going through the motions. He's doing his assignment, but there's really no, there's no passion around it. So God interrupts this moment and brings a word. I got a word for you. 
in the midst of your religious routine, I got a word for you. Ooh, that's good right there. It is so important. But because he, wa because he wasn't connected like he needed to be, he couldn't even receive the word. He couldn't receive the word. He rejected it and said, how that's going to happen. And the reason why that happens is when you just go through the motions, when you just come to church to just say, I was here, I was present, it's off the checklist. People are receiving a word at a level you're not. And you feel like they're overreacting, but they're reacting at the level of their faith. And the reason why you're not reacting or responding at all is not because you're real dignified, it's because you're disconnected. You're not connected with God, you're just going through the motions. You come here on a regular basis, but you're not connected. You're going through the motions. You're doing, you're just lighting candles. Some of you at Landover right now, you got a whole posse over there. You love being with them. You love coming to church. You love being a part of it. But you're just going through the motions. And because you're just going through the motions, you can't receive a word from God. And you can't even believe the word for God. And you're not even applying the word of God. Because for you, working at church is no different than doing chores in your house. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get to you. Some of y'all online right now, you, you online, you online so much design anywhere is actually in your, like, it's in your protocol. Like, you only have to go look up the site. It just comes up. You on there that much. And, 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 but here's the deal. You're not really connected. It's not really serious for you. It's more like, it's more like entertainment for you. You know why? Because some of you cook while you're in service. And some of y'all doing your hair right now while you're in service. And some of you working out right now while you're in service. And some of you paying your bills right now while you're in service. It's not that big of a deal to you. It's just, in fact, you shouldn't even tell people you're in service. You should tell them, say, you should tell people my show on right now. But the reason why, that's why you can't receive. See, but God's trying to say something to you and you're going to miss it. You're going to be like Jacob in Genesis 28. Jacob said, Did I, the Lord was here and I knew it not. Oh, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming for you today. See, is, 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 are you serious about this? Because when he left that sanctuary after he was silenced, oh, God, he left the sanctuary because he was arguing with God's word to him. He's pushing back on a word that came to bless him. He should be on his knees thanking God after all these years. I finally get to see what I've longed to see. And instead he said, ha, we owe. We couldn't have kids when we was young. How are we going to do this now? That don't even make sense. How, Slim? Like, first of all, when he first saw the, the angel Gabriel, he was scared. He was horrified. Now, in verse 18, he's arguing with him. How? How is it going to work? And you know what? Gabriel said, well, since you want to roll like that, we're going to shut you up. You ain't going to speak till it's done. And here's the problem with that. Whenever somebody would got the assignment to light the incense, when they were in the presence of God like that, the people on the outside were waiting for a promise from God to come out of the tent with them. So that person was supposed to bring a word out of there. They were supposed to bring ministry. So the people were coming out, waiting outside saying, he was well, something great. Must be good. He'd been in there a long time. We're going to hear a great word. But when he came out, he couldn't talk. And the reason why he can't minister when he comes out, because he wasn't connected when he was in. Y'all ain't ready for this. <laughs> See, you can't minister to anybody because you don't receive ministry. You're just going through the motions. You come to Zion Church every week. You log on every week. You see me on, but you my pastor. But you don't have anything to give to the people when you come out of the presence of God because you weren't connected when you were in his presence. You didn't come here to really receive. You didn't come here to really be transformed by the word. You came here to check the checklist off the checklist. You want to be a member of this church so you can, so you, you can have your funeral in the church. You don't have to be at the funeral home. But I'm saying as you keep being that uncommitted and that half committed to stuff, you will always get out what you get, what you put in. So now people are waiting on you to have something to say. People are waiting on you to have something to say. You have nothing to say. Because you, you, you received nothing. It was just a nice little homily to you. Oh, that was such a good sermon. Oh, you did so well. Do you understand this is far more important than doing well? God's word is life. It's light. It's direction. And so he's in there, disconnected, lighting and sense, going through the motions. And God shows up. And not only says, <laughs> I've heard your prayer. Let me tell y'all something. Let me go a little deeper. 
this couldn't have been something he was still praying. And the reason why I know that is because when he answers in verse 18, he said, what you talking about? I'm old, she old, that's old. What you talking about, man? You want to have a kid, man? Don't. See, he's, it pricked him because now God is bringing up something that he's made peace that it wasn't going to happen. I ain't even trying to judge Zechariah. I'm just saying it makes sense to me. Given the time spans, the time lapse, it makes sense that he would think this was never going to happen. So now he's making peace with it. And some of you are being a little disturbed because God may be bringing up something that you've already let go of. <laughs> yeah. You've already made peace with this ain't going to ever happen. I've already moved on from that space. And that's where he was. And so I know he wasn't praying about it anymore. But what I know, this is what I love about God. God can go in your prayer vault. I prophesied to somebody. God is about to blow the dust off of some of your prayers, knock the cobwebs off of it, and blow your mind and do things you never thought he would do. You thought it was too late for him to do that. You thought he would never come back. God is about to come back full circle to something you prayed about a long time. Who am I talking to? I feel like I'm talking to somebody really personally right now, but God is about to turn the clock back and answer something. That, and some of us need to be grateful, God. I don't care how far back you go. If it was your will, I want it. Even if it wasn't your time, if it's your will, I still want it. And I will give you the praise for it, and I don't need to know how. So he says, not only am I going to give you a son, because you waited so long, he's going to be exceptional. Make sure he don't drink no alcohol. I said, make sure he don't drink no alcohol. <laughs> Couldn't get no help to the right. Couldn't get no help in the chat. He says he's going to be full of the spirit from, the, from his birth. Who watch this. Don't drink alcohol and you're going to be full of the spirit. I've seen that connection before. Ephesians 5, Paul says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. See, one of the reasons why God wants us to abstain from alcohol is because it competes with his control. Because alcohol can control. And it's not just alcohol. God God doesn't want us to have anything in our life that has the power to control us, that controls our thinking, that controls our behavior, that controls the way we spend our time and our money. God says, I want that control. And the reason, see, it's hard to be filled with the spirit and controlled by the spirit when I'm controlled by something else. And being a committed follower of Jesus requires sacrifice. The reason why John the Baptist, Jesus said about John the Baptist, he's the greatest man ever to live on earth. Read the Bible. He says, there's no man born under heaven, born of a woman better than John the Baptist. But one of it was he made sacrifices. He abstained from things most people did with liberty. And I'm saying, what level of sacrifice are you willing to make to be that committed to God? <laughs> But maybe his parents weren't ready to raise him until they got older. Because they're like, man, what well, we look like pushing a stroller? We need somebody to push us right now. <laughs> but God is not just preparing the blessing that's coming. He's preparing you to be able to steward the blessing. To be able to steward the blessing. I'm almost done. Let me, let me, let me, let me get down. Verse 19. Verse 19. So after he pushes back, Gabriel said, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. He sent me this word to you. You arguing with God right now. It sounds cute. It sounds like, see, Z uh, Zachariah is not asking for information. He's, he's actually pushing back. And Gabriel said, God sent me. I stand in his presence and he sent me with this good news. That's a word for preachers. I want to say everything. I want to say a word for preachers, teachers, anybody that's God's messenger or representative. Look at verse 19. Make Gabriel's de declaration yours. I stand in the presence of God and he sent me with good news. Don't you go with good news until you sent and you cannot be sent unless you've spent time in his presence. There, there are a couple of women in the Bible. They were from a place called Bethany. One's named Martha. They're sisters, Martha, Mary. Jesus came to their house one time in the Bible records. And when Jesus got to their house, Mary sat at his feet, stayed in his presence, was receiving from him. And Martha stayed in the kitchen the whole time. In fact, the only time Martha stayed, left the kitchen was to come to Jesus, not to be in his presence, but to come to Jesus to complain that Mary wasn't in the kitchen with her. 
And Jesus said to Martha, you're doing a good thing, but you're distracted from what's best. Mary has chosen the right thing. And I say this to every communicator of biblical truth. It is not just enough to be in the kitchen. You, you have to get in the kitchen. That's where you prepare your messages. But if you don't get in the presence of Jesus, you might deliver the wrong one. Because if anybody in Bethany needed a spiritual meal, even though Martha was in the kitchen, Mary had the meal. meal. You got to do both. Gabriel says, and because you rejected this, because of your unbelief, you're going to be quiet. So now we get down to verse 25. I'm going to wrap this up. And, and, and when Elizabeth is pregnant, she's rejoicing in the Lord. And the Bible says she's, she hid for five months. So now we can't see her and we can't hear him. One can't be seen, one can't be heard. You know, there's some things God is doing in your life that don't need to be seen or heard yet. I'm going to say that again. I said there's some things in your life that don't need to be seen or heard yet. And a part of your responsibility when God gives you something is, is to protect it. I'm going to close. I, got, I gave you a lot to think about, but I'm going to give you one takeaway. Here's the one takeaway. My time is up. I'm going to give you one takeaway. God has heard your prayer. So here's what you do. Be faithful. Just be faithful. Don't, don't, don't sit around and be inactive saying, I'm just waiting on God. No, 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 no. You're going to become idle. God blessed Zechariah while he was being faithful. God's going to meet you in your faithfulness. He heard your prayer. Just be faithful. Y'all got that? Let's pray, Lord. We thank you for your word. It's still a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. Now help us, Father, to be faithful. Help us. We need you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.